this is the History of Show. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma, and today we'll be covering part two of our short cutlery series. Today we'll be talking about the history of the chopsticks, scissors, and spork. Uh, but first, we have the egg carton count. Today's egg carton count is... It's it's still nine. I'm, I'm sorry to let you guys down, but it's it's still nine. Technically, it's 11. We have two in the queue waiting to be we have put on the board. on the shelf. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if that actually helps dampen sound. I, I mean, I'm, so. it, it does, like, to a very minute degree, I'm sure. Anyway. Also, quick announcement. Um, just a reminder, we do oh, yeah. have a YouTube channel now titled The History Of. So, it's essentially, it's our podcast but it's another platform, so it's on YouTube. Uh, so. Yeah, so we're, we're pro promoting it on YouTube now. Uh, and it's just going to be the audio and the the picture is just our show art. Um, so it's going to be for the people who listen on you who listen to their podcast on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, so uh, as the last, as we mentioned, uh, as the last cutlery episode covered the fork, knife, and spoon. Uh, today in part two, we're going over the chopsticks scissors and spork and uh, just so you know that everything we are discussing today falls under the definition of cutlery yes uh, according to merriam-webster dictionary cutlery is defined as quote edged or cutting tools specifically implements for cutting and eating food sounds good yeah and the first uh, so the first of the three that we're covering today is chopsticks uh, and chopsticks are used primarily in Southeast Asia, as you know. Uh, you may have heard of the three major variations of chopsticks. These are Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, uh, each, when, each with their slight nuances and dimensions. Nevertheless, chopsticks are used all around the world in places like Hawaii, South Africa, and America, where most of us embarrass ourselves trying to use them. We definitely need to settle the burning question. I don't know how many of you are asking. But we're here to we're here to answer it, and that is why are chopsticks called chopsticks? Well, the name comes from Chinese Pidgin English, an unofficially recognized language characterized by having fragments of both English and Chinese. In the language, chop means quickly. This is where the phrase chop chop comes from. I guess the English were fascinated with how quickly the movements of chopsticks were. I'm not totally sure about that one. Anywho. Uh, Chinese Pidgin English emerged in the 19th century with trade between England and China. So the common English name of chopstick most likely came around that time. However, the eating utensil was in use long before this time. The first speculated use of chopstick-like tools was in circa 3000 BC in China. Uh, it is thought that a pair of twigs served as an early cooking tool and helped with tasks like re retrieving foods from a pot uh, that were too hot to touch. And taking a big time jump all the way to around 400 BC, chopsticks started to grow in popularity as a tool for the table, not just for cooking. It was around this period that a great leap in cooking innovation was made. That was cutting the ingredients, primarily meats, into smaller pieces before cooking to shorten cooking time and save fuel. Having the food already in smaller pieces was perfect for chopsticks and made knives obsolete at the dinner table. Ha! Uh, yeah, and Confucius Rip. was a strong supporter of this as he said, The honorable and upright man allows no knives on his table. And did you know Confucius was a vegetarian? I did not, but now I do. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either. Just Let's learned. take another time leap all the way to 500 A.D. Not quite as big this time. By 580, chopsticks had made their way to other parts of Southeast Asia, like Korea, Vietnam, and Japan. Of course, uh, you can probably assume that from this point on, the chopsticks evolved into their slightly different forms, uh, depending on the location, uh, and the rest is history. But history is what we're all about. And so I will discuss a couple of etiquette rules you need to know the next time you use chopsticks. First, we need to mention that there are a few things you can do wrong that symbolize death with chopsticks. Never stick and leave your chopsticks vertically in your dish of food. Never leave chopsticks crossed on the table 
and never dig around in your food for a specific morsel of food. This symbolized digging your own grave. Yeah, and there are a lot of superstitions that have to do with chopsticks that go beyond this. But other unwritten rules, or maybe they're written somewhere, uh, include never point your chopsticks at someone else, uh, someone else at the table. Uh, never stab your food with your chopsticks. Use them in the way they were designed to be used. Well. <laughs> and last on the list, but certainly not limited to, uh, never place your chopsticks on the bare table. Place them on your dish or something else, but not just on the table. I get that. Well, that wraps up the history of chopsticks, and now we move on to the history of scissors. scissors. Archaeologically, it is estimated that the first form of scissors comes from the Middle East between 1000 and 2000 BC. I know this isn't very specific, but like many things, the history of scissors gets clearer as time goes on. Just to give you a slightly more specific idea of the time of origin, some early scissors have been found in Egypt dating back to 1500 BC. Again, in Egypt, like everything else we've covered. Who would have thought? Uh, but this ancient tool is not exactly the same uh, as what you may know today as scissors. Uh, instead of having two blades with handles on the end and a pivot point in the center, uh, try to maybe try to close your eyes and visualize this because it's going to get a little difficult. Mm -hmm. These ancient scissors uh, operated more as long C-shaped tongs, uh, except instead of tongs, there were blades. And try to imagine squeezing the lengthened C-shape together to bend the metal at its curve and bring the blades together. That's the best I can describe it. I might attach a picture in the show notes. Well, I think you did a good job describing it. Thank you. The first modern-looking scissors are said to be invented in the first century AD in the Roman Empire. In other words, the first pivot scissors. Yeah, so the first modern-looking scissors were the first pivot scissors. These eventually spread to the east, probably through trade routes to places like ancient China, Korea, and Japan. And uh, you know the company Fiskars or Fiskars scissors? Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's time for a little story story time Ooh, with sit down, Robert. Kids. So Fiskars, I'm, I'm just going to say Fiskars from this point on. Fiskars started in what is modern day Finland in 1649. Sweden uh, was a big place for iron during that time. And I'm just going to say modern day Finland was uh, under the under Swedish rule at that period of time. That's why I'm going back and forth. But modern day Finland, but it was under Sweden. So Sweden was a big place for iron during that time. And a man named Peter Thorwast, uh, Thorwast, Thorwast, I'm pretty sure it's Thorwast, uh, Thorwast. Torwast <laughs> set up a shop utilizing materials from a nearby mine in Finland. Uh, in the shop, Torwast forged different products, primarily using cast iron. As the company grew through the years, it focused on making practical items like nails, knives, and iron wheels. In 1783, so over the years, uh, after a lot of, after the the business had evolved over time. Uh, the company went under the ownership of the Jorkman family, and the focus shifted from ironworks to copperworks. Uh, the company changed ownership again in 1822, and by this time, uh, or by this point in time, uh, Fiskars was its own little village. Fast forward to 1967, Fiskars started making uh, the handles of their scissors with the revolutionary new material, plastic. Uh, premiering in the color orange. I like that. That's why Fiskars is really like the brand we know for scissors is because of it was it was a big deal for them to make their first to be the first to make scissors with plastic handles uh, in 1967. Uh, then in 1977, uh, Fiskars opened its first factory in the USA, and then from there things get only more and more familiar when it comes to. Uh, the staple, staple company for scissors. And no, we are not sponsored by Fiskars. They just, they're just a company with a really long history. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up the history of the scissors. And now we mosey on over to the history of the spork. The spork. I don't know of anyone who actually uses a spork on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, 
they compromise on two jobs and they aren't very good at either one of them. The only somewhat practical purpose of a plastic spork is when someone goes backpacking, but I mean, still, I don't know. Anyway, the spork is a portmanteau, and according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a portmanteau is a large suitcase. Wait, okay, what? it's got to be, okay, it's, this is the second definition. <laughs> a portmanteau is a word or morpheme whose form and meaning are and meaning are derived from a blending of two or more distinct fo- forms, such as uh, smog from smoke and fog. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. So spork is spoon and fork. It's a portmanteau. So tell your friends. The first instruments of cutlery combining the features of the spoon and fork go all the way back to the later part of the Middle Ages. Such utensils were said to be used for eating candied fruit. That sounds quite bougie. Later in the 19th century, more spork-like utensils emerged, uh, like the ice cream fork and the terrapin fork, used for eating terrapin. Yikes. Now you would be amazed at how many different patents there are on the, quote, spork. If you Google search history of the spork, a significant number of your search results will be patents for the spork. I know, it's pretty crazy. In 1874, One of the first patents of a utensil resembling a spork was filed by a man named Samuel W. Francis. Over the years, various instruments of cutlery that teased the idea of combining the spoon, fork, and or knife. By the way, if you want to learn more about those three, uh, check out our cutlery episode, part one. These combo cutleries came and maybe never really went. They just declined slightly in popularity. And side note... I actually found something called the chork. (laughs) The chork. Uh, The chork. uh, It's a pair of reusable chopsticks, but at the base or end, I guess, uh, the sticks are attached by the head of a fork. I guess that's for Americans who want to use chopsticks. I mean, when they give up, they have a backup. That's terrible. Regardless, the term spork was never trademarked until 1970. I mentioned er earlier that there are a boggling number of patents for the spork. And I checked some of them out out and found a fairly recent patent for the spork, uh, invented in 2006, approved in 2007, by a 13-year-old named Gabrielle Pollard Watts. Gabrielle Pollard Watts. Uh, In the opening of her description, she states, I, Gabrielle Pollard Watts, have invented and designed the spork. This invention is an easy-to-use, double-sided eating utensil and she goes on to describe how she invented it and all that uh but sorry gabrielle but there are there were much more there was a much more elegant version of this design patented in 2010 by uh joachim 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 nordwall so that says like just how recent just how recent the patents for these sporks Mm -hmm. go I think he was able to file a separate patent for this because the heads of the spoon and fork were slightly tilted and offset. Just my guess, though. Oh, and yeah, just to, to help you visualize that better, one thing I need to mention is that the uh, the spoon was on one end and the fork was on the other. So that has something to do with it. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, the articles of cutlery we have discussed today may not be the first things that come to mind when one hears the word cutlery. Nevertheless, they are staple tools in the lives of billions around the world. With the chopsticks, scissors, and spork, this wraps up the second part of our short cutlery series. If you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day, and you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning. <laughs>